Hey everybody, it's already Red Fab Kate. Welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at Paul McCartney's very first Hoffman bass. It's just like this one back here. Uh, it's called a cabin bass nowadays, uh, but as our friend uh, from Germany, Nick, Nick Waz, he's back again for some great history, some stuff I never even knew about, about Paul McCartney's very first Hoffner bass. And so I'll just let Nick do the talking. So straight from Bavaria, from Hoffner, author, great mate of mine, Nick Waz, everybody. Take it away, Nick. Hi, it's Nick, the guy from Hoffner again. I'm helping Ardy today with uh, a little video about Paul McCartney and where he got his first Hofner bass from. He got a bass like this. These days they call it the Cavern bass, um, but he didn't get that name till the 1990s. Back in the day when he bought it in 1961, it was just called Hofner 501 bass. So let's tell you the story about that. The big problem is that Paul gave an interview back in the 1990s when he said, he went to a little music shop locally and saw a bass. But something significant he said there was that he saw a bass that was symmetrical and because it was symmetrical, he thought being a left-hander, he could play it upside down. So he clearly saw a right-handed bass in the shop. The shop he actually went to wasn't a little local music shop. It was a big music store in Hamburg called Steinway. You might have heard of the name Steinway. They're famous for making grand pianos and they still exist today, though the shop's long gone. So, Paul goes to Steinway's, which is at Colonada in Hamburg. It's not very far from the Reaper Barn, St. Pauli, where they were playing. He sees this bass, it's right-handed, but the salesman advises him that Hofner can easily make him a left-handed bass if he's prepared to wait. And that's what they do. They order a left-handed bass from Hofner, which gets built and it's delivered back to Steinway's about two or three months later. So he must have gone in there in the April when the Beatles arrived in Hamburg again. And he'll have picked it up June, July, something like that in 1961. I spoke to Steinway's this year. And they were very helpful. They didn't realise that Paul had bought a bass from them all those years ago. And they then proceeded to search in their archives to see what they had. Unfortunately, there's nothing there at all about Paul buying his bass. But what they did do for me was send me some pictures from their catalogue from 1957-58. So we can actually see what the building looked like and what the department on the fourth floor where they sold guitars and drums, where Paul must have gone to buy the bass. There's also a couple of nice pictures of the window at Steinway's. Unfortunately, no often the bass is in the window, but it was clearly Christmas. So the pictures are quite interesting to show what type of music shop it was back in the 50s. There are some pictures, a very few, taken of the Beatles in the Top 10 Club, with Paul with the new bass, and Stu Sutcliffe with his 505 Hofner bass. It must have been a special occasion because they took several pictures that day. Um, and I'm guessing that Stu had returned to the Beatles at a rehearsal just to have a bash with them for some fun. Why did Paul choose a Hofner? Well, let's have a think. John Lennon's first electric guitar was a Hofner Club 40. George had had two Hofners, a president, also a Club 40. Stuart was playing a Hofner 505 bass, a Hofner. It was a brand they were familiar with. They'd have seen many Hofners in England when they played there. It was the right price. They weren't too expensive. So I think the choice was easy for Paul. They knew Hofners. It was a brand they knew. He chose one of those. So thanks for watching. That's the short story about Paul and how he got his first Hofner, the so-called Cavern bass, and hope you enjoyed it. Okay, come on. Was that cool? I had no idea Paul went into that particular story. I never even heard that story before. So thank you so much, Nick Was. You gotta check Nick out, grab his Hofner book. It's uh, invaluable, really. 
Thanks again. Thank you, Nick. We'll see you soon, everybody. We're right here at the Fab Cave. Cheers.